So what if I were to say that the Bible is so cool and so amazing and has so many interesting stories about it that it actually inspires you to want to read it more? It's been held in the hands of reformers and revolutionaries. The fact that it's been smuggled into different nations against the will of the government and the fact that it has been used at the dinner tables and grave sites and weddings of countless Christians throughout the centuries. That wouldn't you like to know more about how it got into the form that it is? Wouldn't you like to know more about its great history and its great legacy? They want to know where the Bible came from and how it got to their dining room table, how it got to their coffee table, how it got on their shelf. How did it get there? But then also, I began to hear all these myths and legends about the Apocrypha and the Vulgate and uh, the King James Bible, and I heard all these little snippets. I, I began to realize that there was already an assumed level of knowledge that I didn't have. Now, fast forward to the point where I'm a teacher, and I do find that there are students that feel the same way. They know their Bible, they read their Bible, but it doesn't mean they necessarily know its some of its basic structures, some of its basic elements. The first arc in this course is actually just a, a real quick retelling of the formation of the Bible itself in terms of canon. From there, we move into the history of it. And we look at, in particular, the Vulgate, the Catholic Bible as it becomes known as, and how it was formed and how it came to dominate. Then we look at the Reformation and Wycliffe and others like that, these new translations. Then we move on to the colonies and the formation of the English Bible. And finally, that we, we culminate looking at the modern translation movements, the Bible societies like the Gideons, the American Bible Society, and all the new translations today. You realize that the Bible actually had a purpose that it was being carefully chosen and uh, translated all these years. There, there are probably two things that uh, are directly, um, immediately applicable from a course like this. The first is just a deep appreciation and an awareness of how the Bible works, Old and New Testament, how it was translated, etc. The other is, is I think it'll make you enormously satisfied and calm when it comes to the constant shrill claims that X and Y translation are the worst and A and B translations are the best. And so that, in that case, anybody who uses the Bible will actually find it useful. But in particular, those people who are like me that have lots of questions and don't know where they can begin because yes, you can Google it, but you don't know if that's true or not. And you're not sure which is historically accurate. The goal here is to say that these things are the most important stories along the way. I'd encourage you to sign up for this course, particularly if you have a question about how the Bible works in your hands, the one that you love to read. And we want to understand the Bible and to understand God's word as a result.